flight of Atlantis. But I'm going to say, will Dan say, Eric Engel? From CBS News headquarters in New York, here is Dan Rather. Good day. Drama and suspense uh, in both Washington, D.C. and at uh, Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In Washington, the jury has reached a verdict in the Oliver North case. We do not know what it is. It may be a few minutes before we know. We're monitoring that story. And in Florida, with a small window to launch, the launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis again has been delayed. But they're hopeful of getting it up in the air over the next uh, 25 minutes or so. Final countdown underway again for the launch of this space shuttle. The shuttle all fueled up and fit to fly again with a crew of five. This after Friday's disappointment, postponement just 31 the seconds the, before uh, blastoff uh, caused uh, by a faulty cells. engine pump and, and fuel line problem. Winds and clouds have been hovering around the margin of what's acceptable in Florida. Clouds, the basic reason why there's been a slight delay in starting the final countdown for today's launch. U.S. Navy Captain David Walker is the mission commander, and the main mission is release of the Magellan spacecraft on a 15-month voyage to map the planet Venus. CBS News correspondent Peter Van Sant is at the Kennedy Space Center with the latest. And Peter, I gather that they want to move the countdown time down a bit to give them maximum window launch time. That's right. Uh, the countdown right now is at about 6 minutes, 46 seconds and counting down. But it's going to stop at 5 minutes because we still have this problem with the clouds in two places. One at the return to launch site, as they call it. That is the landing strip here at the Kennedy Space Center where the, where the orbiter would return in the event of an emergency where they had to come back and land here, the clouds are below 8,000 feet, which is a violation. They have to be higher than that, so we're waiting on those clouds. Also, the range safety people who keep an eye on the shuttle as it climbs into space, they're having trouble with visibility, and uh, that's also in violation right now, so we're hoping that will clear up. So throughout the morning, the, the major concern has been the weather. During the last several hours, the clouds have burned off somewhat. There are some sun breaks, although the sky is still gray. Now NASA managers are also keeping an eye on crosswinds, which have been gusting at times above the safe level to launch for, the, uh, for this crew. And for the five-member crew of Atlantis, it was deja vu all over again this morning as they prepared to board Atlantis for the second time in less than a week. After a steak and eggs breakfast, the astronauts put on their bulky, uncomfortable flight suits and headed out to pad 39B. Four of the five astronauts have flown on the shuttle, Last week's launch was stopped just 31 seconds from liftoff after a fuel pump failed. That problem has been corrected, and NASA says Atlantis is ready to fly. There is little room for delay this morning, Dan, because this launch window ends at 2.52 Eastern Time. If they go beyond that point, NASA will have to postpone the launch, and we'll try again tomorrow. Peter, if we may, let's take a look at the clock and call our viewers and listeners attention to the clock which is moving as you see down in the lower right hand quadrant uh, of the screen what uh, the NASA officials are doing at the moment and check me as we go along here Peter to make sure this is accurate is to move the clock down to five five minutes to go before launch you've just seen it now the clock stops at five minutes to launch time uh, previously it, the hold was at nine minutes they moved it on down to five we minutes because as you point out uh, Peter weather is satisfactory hold on just a any second. other constraints to Let's pick up NASA. have been cleared Copy. NASA just informing the astronauts that the weather conditions have improved and all other indications look like they may get it up we were explaining that they moved the countdown down to five minutes and are holding it now at five minutes rather than nine because uh, they must get this launch underway in the next 26 and a half minutes. Uh, it's now just past 2.30 Eastern time, and they must get this launch up by 57, 2.57 Eastern time. So they've moved the clock down to five. Uh, NASA has just informed the astronauts who are all buckled in uh, in the space shuttle that things are uh, looking positive, looking optimistic now, and so they may, may, underscore the word, get it up this afternoon, uh, some suspense, because they have now only about 26 minutes in which to get that. Reminding that this is CBS News live coverage of both the launch of uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis, indeed, if it turns out to be a launch, and we are monitoring events in Washington, D.C. The jury says it has a verdict in the Oliver North trial. We do not yet know what the verdict is, and we're monitoring that, and will, of course, bring you the results of the verdict as soon as we have them. Back to Space Shuttle Atlantis, sending Magellan to Venice is very tricky business. It's a little like trying to fire a BB gun at a moving target from a speeding airplane. That's why the daily launch window is so precise and not very long. 
Complicating all this, NASA needs to launch before darkness descends at emergency landing locations around the world, including the early emergency landing location right there at the Kennedy Space Center. Then there's the other larger window. If the small Magellan spacecraft cannot be launched out of the shuttle once it begins orbiting, by the end of May, it will be two years before Venus is lined up properly for another try, for another sort of BB shot fired from a moving uh, space shuttle. So that's the reason we have uh, some suspense and some drama in Florida this afternoon. Let's take a review quickly here of the crew aboard this particular shuttle launch, Space Shuttle Atlantis. Commander David Walker, pilot of Discovery, the uh, space shuttle in 1984. Pilot, Ronald Graby, 43, Air Force Colonel, pilot for first flight of Atlantis in 1985. Mission specialist and the only woman aboard this particular flight, Mary Cleave, PhD, who flew in Atlantis in 1985. Uh, mission specialist, Mark Lee, 36-year-old Air Force Major. This will be his first space flight. He will actually be in charge of deploying the small Magellan spacecraft toward Venus. And mission specialist, Norman Taggart, 45, flew on Challenger in 1983 and 1985. So that's the crew. Uh, Commander David Walker, you can imagine uh, how tense they are there aboard the space shuttle, although uh, with uh, one exception, they're veterans of space flight, but it's the sort of thing you never get completely accustomed to, and they've also had the false start. Now, let's take uh, a look at the first U.S. interplanetary mission in 11 years. Keep in mind that the United States, partly because of the tragedy aboard the space shuttle Challenger, uh, partly because of that, we've not been in the interplanetary exploration uh, business for about 11 years. This will be the first mission in more than a decade for the United States to uh, one of our uh, sister brother planets. So let's go to David Dow, who's standing by at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena for an explanation of exactly what it is that the uh, Magellan will be doing once it gets launched to Venus. David? Well, Dan, scientists expect that uh, Magellan will give them the closest look that they've ever had of uh, Earth's uh, next-door neighbor, so to speak. Uh, but even more important, they hope that it will launch the U.S. back into another golden era of space exploration. The last U.S. launches to another planet in 1978 were also to Venus and produced some stunning pictures of the dense carbon dioxide clouds that conceal the planet's surface. But the best pictures of that surface so far come from a Soviet radar mapping mission in 1983. After a 15-month journey to Venus, Magellan will go into orbit and send scientists radar images that are expected to be 10 times more detailed than the Soviet pictures. They'll reveal cliffs and canyons of a hostile land where temperatures reach 900 degrees and at least one mountain is a mile higher than Everest. Eventually, the half-billion-dollar mission could produce a map of almost the entire surface of Venus, with the clarity of these pictures of Earth taken by similar radar from... Well, he was found guilty on three criminal counts. Let's switch to uh, the Kennedy Space three Center in Florida. In the countdown at T-minus two minutes three. and 55 seconds. Just about three minutes until launch time, if all goes well. Here's CBS News correspondent Peter Van Sant on the scene. Of the main engines will be terminated. Dan, we got the go for weather. Uh, it's been spotty. Uh, we've been hoping for some sun breaks. They've, they've, they've managed to get some breaks, not only in the clouds, but in the crosswinds that they were very nervous about. They just uh, gimbaled the, uh, the three main engines, which you can see here. Gimbling means they move them around. That's how they steer the shuttle as it, as it moves up into space. And right now, uh, things are all go, and uh, we shall see if the weather holds for the next uh, two minutes, 35 seconds. Well, that sets the scene, Peter Van Sant. So let's you and I be quiet and watch and listen and hope they get it away as uh, they begin pulling away the equipment in hopes the space shuttle Atlantis can get up and away this afternoon. The pilot, Ron Graby, has cleared the caution and warning memory. The crew will be reminded to close their visors on their launch and entry helmets at the two-minute point. Just five seconds away from that. OTC to flight crew, close and lock your visor and initiate O2 flow and have a good flight. And PLT OTC, turn on debris camera at T-minus 10 seconds. T-minus one minute.